With Botantic AI, building agents has become faster and more efficient than ever before. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works, discuss the main benefits, and unpack the core elements of the framework by building a real-world example of a customer support agent. Let's get started. Pedantic AI is developed by the team behind Pedantic, the number one data validation library for Python. The mission behind Pedantic AI is to do for generative AI what Fast API did for web development. That means creating a framework that's intuitive, accelerates the development process, and reduces bugs with type checking and data validation. When we talk about agents, we usually mean function calling with LLMs. That is, connecting an LLM that can produce structured outputs such as JSON with one or more tools. In Pedantic AI, the concept of an agent is further refined. Here an agent consists of a model, one or more system prompts, a structured result, dependencies, and function tools. I'm going to walk you through each of these components now with a practical example of a customer support agent connecting to the Shopify API. I have a requirements.txt file here where we only need Pedantic, Pedantic AI, we need the Shopify API Python library, Anthropic, and python.env to load environment variables. And the environment variables are in a .env file. Here I have an example .env file. We have the Anthropic API key, the Shopify token, and the Shopify merchant name. We're going to start off building the most basic agent we can build with Pedantic AI. So I'm going to import agent from Pedantic AI, async io, and .env in order to be able to load my environment variables. And there's really nothing agentic about the most basic agent. It's basically an LLM call. Here I'm calling Cloud 3.7 Sonnet with a system prompt. The important thing to note here is how we run the agent. In the first example here, I'm going to run the agent in a synchronous way. I'm using run sync. And this is how you usually run agents in other frameworks. But Pedantic AI is designed with asynchronous programming in mind. So when you call a run on an agent instead of run sync, you're going to do asynchronous execution by default. In other words, agent run is a coroutine, and we can wrap up the coroutine in an async function and use async io to run the agent. And of course, you can also call your agent directly with async io by passing the coroutine agent.run to async io.run. Now let me run this basic agent just to see that everything works as intended. If I run this, I get the response from the three different ways of executing the agent. Now let's turn this into an actual agent by giving it access to the Shopify API. We're going to add a small Shopify data library. This class utilizes the Shopify admin API Python library and allows us to extract data from three different Shopify objects. We can extract customer data from the customer object using a customer ID as an input. We can also extract product data from a given store. We don't need an ID for that. We just need the merchant name, which we have in the environment variables. And then we can extract orders from a given customer. And we're going to need a customer ID to be able to extract the orders from a given customer. Now we want to focus on Pedantic AI, so I'm not gonna spend any more time on how this library works. If you want to learn how to extract data from Shopify, there are tutorials on my channel and also on the main webpage. Before we move on to giving the agent access to Shopify, let's just check that this class works. Here I have a test Shopify.py file where I'm instantiating the API and then I'm printing out products, I'm printing out customer information for a given customer ID and the orders for that particular customer. Now, if I run Python test Shopify.py, you can see that we fetch the product data, the customer data, and the order data. And now we have what we need to explore the capabilities of Pedantic AI. To see how Pedantic AI differs from other AI agent frameworks, you need to understand the concept of dependencies. Dependencies allows us to dynamically control the context of the agent's work. We can use dependencies to define dynamic system prompts and also provide context for the tools to give the tools access to those dependencies. To see how this works, let's start by giving the agent access to some custom information. To begin with, just the customer name. Now here I've updated the agent.py file with some additional code. In order to work with dependencies, we're going to import run context from Pedantic AI. I'm importing base model and field from Pedantic and data class from data classes because I want to 
define a data class that gives us support dependencies. And then I want to define a pedantic model that gives us the structured output, which I call support results. And this will force the agent to give us a structured output defined by this pedantic model. Then in my agent, in addition to the model that we had before and the system prompt, we're going to pass in the support dependencies as steps type and the support results as result type. And note that I have the same static system prompt as before that I'm passing to the agent. Now I'm going to define a second one, a dynamic system prompt that I'm also going to add to the agent. And the main difference between static system prompts and dynamic system prompts is that dynamic system prompts depend on some context that is not known until runtime. A dynamic system prompt is defined with a system prompt decorator and a system prompt function that takes run context as the first parameter. And the way that we access the context is to use the attribute depths. So we call depths on the context. Also note that run context is parameterized with our dependency type, in our case, defined by the data class support dependencies. Under the hood, Pedantic is going to check the type of the dependency that we're injecting and raise an error if the type is wrong. Now, in our case, what we want to inject into the dynamic system prompt is a customer name that we're going to fetch from the customer object in Shopify using a customer ID. And this is going to give our agent a very basic context for the interaction with the customer. Now, in the main function, we'll instantiate the Shopify API and we'll create the support dependencies with the customer ID and the Shopify API, and then we'll call the agent with the dependency. And this allows us to fetch the customer name using the email and then inject that into the system prompt and give the agent access to the name for the interaction. Now, if we run this, you'll see that the agent now has access to the customer name. Hello, John. I'm sorry to hear that you haven't received your order after five days. You can also see that the agent is not making product recommendations and priority level is seven. This is filled out by the LLM. So the agent is well aware that this is a support call. All right, so now let's move on to tools. In Pedantic AI, there are two types of tools. There are plain tools. Those are the tools that you are familiar with from other frameworks. And then there are tools that need access to the agent context in dependencies. Now, in our case, the dependencies include a custom ID. So if a tool needs that custom ID to make an API call, well, it needs access to the dependencies. I'm going to start off by showing you what a plain tool call looks like. So we're going to let the agent fetch some products where we don't need the custom ID and then make some recommendations to the customer. Now, a plane tool is created with the tool underscore plane decorator. And this function will just make an API call to the Shopify API and fetch some product data. And we don't need the customer ID for that. The main query I'm going to run with this is what are some popular products you have in your store? Now, if I run the agent, you can see that it gets access to the product information. Unlike before, it sets recommend products true and priority level is now lower. It's at level three. Now, finally, we'll do a tool call with access to dependencies. For that, I'm defining a tool with the tool decorator and not tool underscore plane. And you can see I'm passing in run context to the tool so that we get access to the dependency. And again, the context is accessed with the depths attribute. So in this case, I'm accessing the customer ID and the Shopify API from the context. That allows the agent to fetch orders for that specific customer because the agent needs access to the customer ID in order to do that. Now here in the tool, I'm extracting the relevant information from the order returned by Shopify. I could also have done that in the Shopify data class. And we do that by looping through orders and line items and just appending everything as text. With this tool, our agent has access to order data as well. And again, in the main function, we do the same thing as before. We instantiate the Shopify data class, then we add the dependencies, and then we run the agent with the dependencies. I'm going to run the agent with the query, can you check my recent orders? And if I run the agent with pythonagent.py, you can see that the agent now has access to John's order history. 
Now this wraps up our pedantic AI quick start. I hope you can see that this is a promising framework, especially when it comes to building data analysis agents. We're going to be spending more time building with this framework in future tutorials. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.